Welcome to HeroQuest fans. Okay, I'm going to start off with a warning <laughs> because my voice is a li getting a little hoarse and it is pretty dry in here and there's actually a lot to talk about. So cheers dead gamer, I've got a beverage here and I'm popping some throat lozenges just so I don't lose my voice. So welcome to HeroQuest fans, shout out to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio for the great music. As always, we got our playlist there. But let's switch over to Spanish eBay. Yes, Spanish eBay. So we've got this person, uh, Pete is my name. And I just realized he has it in English. He explained it. Uh, so new, sealed, picked up in a store who shipped early, not available till April. And he was selling a copy of HeroQuest's newest expansion against the Ogre Horde which we've been hearing a lot about and people were speculating, Oh, maybe this was a prototype or something. I, my speculation was maybe this is the box from Luca, <laughs> but no, this is sealed and this is showing new information. Now we did have someone on yield in who posted about this right before I was leaving for a family event for the day. He said it was 99 quid, which is like $125 at the start. Chwat. C-H-W-A-T, so thank you to him for the new scoop. And he posted these pictures, which are taken directly from that page. And so we learned a lot just from looking at it. And I mean, I'm sure you'll get extensive speculation and analysis from others soon. But my initial reactions are pretty similar to others, which is like, wow, okay, <laughs> Well, this totally uh, puts the nail in the coffin to the theory that it was canceled. I mean, we had already gotten official confirmation that wasn't the case. So, rumor destroyed, <laughs> busted. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's look more closely at these, and I'll just say, hey Xerxes, hey Bohemius. So we we've got to talk about it. We can't not talk about it. So make my day. Welcome. Fellow humans, not bots. Okay, so we're just going to look at... Nope, that's not the right one. Okay, where is it? Okay, so this is the picture. I've just blown it up. So we see the back of the box, which we hadn't seen publicly before until this morning. So you might say, well, why is everyone getting so excited? I mean, a bunch of ogres. Ogres are like the most generic monster you could think of. It's a big, stupid guy who has a lot of 
body points or does a lot of damage and you know it's a slog to fight but people are nostalgic for against the ogre horde released in europe and it, and carmine already told us at gen con that they were adding more material if they were to do it because he was very coy about it but i mean he basically answered our questions pretty straightforward um was to say well if we were to release it we would add three more quests so here's the uh Information here. Zargon's sinister administrations creep further into the lands beyond the realm. So this is different than what we saw on those uh, pre-order pages. So those may have just been boilerplate copied and pasted from the original version. Restless whispers drift through the villages on the outskirts of the realm, speaking of the violent and sudden incursions of the ogre people on communities previously untouched by them. Zargon's latest plot has ensnared the dear grushed horde a powerful but isolated clan of ogres to the north so i'm going to stop here this to me sounds a little bit like spirit queen's torment saying hey orcs are evil but not all orcs you know most of the ones you'll be fighting will be evil but i'm not saying all of them are evil now with the ogres the original version did say they were kind of a chaotic type of monster basically not chaos in the sense of like morkar but saying that basically their morality was you know, they like to eat food and they like to fight. And whoever gives them that, that's what they do. But they're hard to control. And so Morkar's plot was to use his uh, Sorcerer Festral to go using his magic ring, so very Lord of the Rings-esque, to try to uh, manipulate them or influence them to join the, the side of chaos and fight against the Empire. So we'll see how much of that storyline is retained. But a lot of people are speculating already that, I mean, if this is the success we're imagining it will be, then Woods of Morkar seems like a foregone conclusion. And if our fears that HeroQuest is being rolled back turn out to be nothing, and they continue to get sales, then we'll probably see Wizards of Morkar. And it, probably just like that one, they'll fill it out with more material. So, let's see. And does this... Dishgrut <laughs> Horde have any uh, corollary in the world of Warhammer? I don't know. Playing as one of HeroQuest's brave heroes, you must enter the World's End Arena. Of course, stop here. That was what was mentioned in that lore scroll for the Wandering Monk. So, World's End instead of World's Edge. To prove your mettle as warriors, locate the hidden lair of the Ogre Horde and weed out the root of corruption at the heart of their clan. So once again, sounds like, hey, it's not really their fault. It's their corrupt, you know, leadership or whatever. Or maybe they're just talking about Festral himself. But the thing is, in the original, spoilers, even after you dis defeat Festral, destroy his, his magic, and you beat the ruler, you still have to fight the ogres. So it's not like they're all good guys. So looking at this, immediately I thought, these are dark blue and i'm like yes we finally getting midnight blue characters but actually it could be just wishful thinking or maybe i wasn't looking at it the right lighting it could be they're just dark gray so it looks like we've got two of these ogres that are holding clubs so i don't know if that's supposed to be the ogre warrior but there's only two of them there's two of this other one which people have been calling the shaman i guess just because he's got that well they both have kind of top knot type haircuts well this one could be a mohawk i guess on the left but they're saying well maybe this is a magical ogre but there's two of them so they look like standard size ogres but then look at these guys and several people were saying oh i want you know big figures you know after seeing the um the frozen horror how he was like took up four squares so these guys look like they take up two squares and they look to be beige at least in this picture it's colors so this guy's got some blade a blade for an arm makes me think of the spike gauntlet from the original version spiky armor and a spiked shield is that the champion is that i'm not sure <laughs> but whoever wanted big monsters you got them and not only that but you got this other one this looks like he's got a crown so i guess that's the ogre lord or maybe they're changing the names people were saying oh the ogre king the ogre whatever um and then we've got this third one that's really big so three big figures in one package. And this guy has 
like a skull helmet and a blade that's like strapped to his arm. So I guess this is the ch champion and the chieftain. I don't know which is which. This is the lord, ogre lord, and then these other ones are the ogre warriors. But maybe they'll give them different names or abilities. It would be interesting if, if there was one that had some magic of some kind that maybe it's maybe random. We don't know what they're doing with the ogre body points. So battle at the world's end tournament for glory and gold. Take up the tournament gauntlet and challenge Zargon's might and specialized combat system will emerge victorious. So I'm speculating that one of these big tiles here is supposed to be the arena, but they're pretty small. So what is the arena? Is this something that takes up an entire quest? Is this a mode switch that you can apply to any quest in the existing 10 that come in this pack? Or is it kind of like the hideout or the plaza in Rise of the Dread Moon, where you can just kind of like go off in this direction and do a little fight and then come back? Is that how it works? And does this mean these are solo adventures or it's just saying you pick a hero and then you pick a hero and it's a group quest fighting these guys? But the arena shown at Gen Con showed a group of heroes. So anyway, let me address some comments. Um, sorry, guys, I'm not trying to ignore you here. I know you were like posting like crazy. Okay, wow, so much news. Holy crap, mine exploding here. <laughs> well, it's just a box, but I mean, yeah. So according to the person on uh, eBay, this was just, they just got it shipped early. They just posted a picture and that blew all our minds. The other person who is posting is, um, let me see if I can get his name right here. Uh, Rafa El Vikingo. Vikingo? Also, His Bazargon posted uh, an interview with Stephen Baker, which has some cool stuff, which you've, we've got to cover on a show. There's too much to cover in one. But he said some interesting things that I hadn't heard before. There were some issues with the editing. I'm not sure if it was, you know, transcription problems or what, but uh, you get the gist. So anyway, back to this. Um, Bohemius says they resculpt the basic ogre warrior like we speculated when we see cover in Luca. Yeah, so the front cover actually does give you some clues of what these characters look like. It wasn't just generic art. Like in the original version, you saw all these different orc designs, or I mean ogre designs. They kind of look like mutant orcs to me. These different designs, but not all of them uh, showed up in plastic format. They were kind of generic. Woot, woot, woot. Me, me, me. Yes. Outstanding, says Xerxes. Bohemia says, the king, he got a crown. So many possibilities. Yeah. Well, it all depends on how you paint them. But I wonder, is this beige, is this a new color? Or is this an undead type color? It looks different, but it could be the lighting. Okay, so we've also got, looks to be orc archers. Look at that bow, it is huge. So in the original version, there were orcs with bows, but you just use regular figures. And it's like, okay, they just do three damage close and they do three damage at range. But there's two versions. So there's two of each. So there's four orc archers. But it looks like, I'm guessing these are male and female versions. So similar to Mage of the Mirror and Rise of the Dread Moon, how you got like mirrored versions of each other. But then you've got these different goblins. So I thought there was orcs, or it was goblins with bows and orcs with staves or orcs with crossbows. But here we've got, I guess, a goblin holding a, like a bomb. Like a, is it a smoke bomb? Is it a grenade? Is he a goblin sapper? I'm thinking of things Amalgamash was talking about. Because to his credit, I believe he did predict something like that. Or maybe it was, uh, you're throwing the goblin as a bomb, like a Pokeball. And this other goblin looks to be holding a boomerang. Unless it's uh, a grease gun or something, or a las gun. But I'm guessing it's probably a boomerang. So that could be your ranged. Maybe just to make it more interesting than just, oh, he's got a bow, he's got a crossbow. But what's the difference between these two? Is there a difference? Here's the Ogre Throne. I think this was a foregone conclusion. Everybody assumed there'd be a big plastic throne, but it's huge to fit one of these huge guys. I mean, it looks like a building almost, like a temple or something. Looks like you could, the figures could stand on it and fight on it. Bohemia says, we can't see the arena tile. Did they use the bottom of the box like I speculated at the beginning? More styles for each. Oh, you're saying the lid of the box. Like you take the lid off 
Not the front cover, because we saw the back of the front cover, unless it was a prototype. At Luca, it was just gray. Or, I mean, uh, brown. Just cardboard color. But is the, maybe the bottom of the box is. Or maybe the candy tray is. I mean, who knows, right? Maybe it's something totally different. More styles of each type of monster. I'm all for it. Well, let's see here. So this is the Pit of Chaos right here. Other people on Yield End have been doing this already. Okay, is this this thing underneath here? Is this something? This looks like that room with the carpeting. Remember with the design on it? This, I'm guessing, is the... Uh, or maybe one of these, I don't know which is which, but there's a room with like a bunch of weapons laying around and like blood smeared on the floor. And there's this thing, but this thing is really, really small. I'm picturing like something this size for the arena. But the other, the reverse side of this is going to be the outdoor area with the grass. Of course, maybe that is the arena. Just, you know, for the arena, use this tile. That previous pre order page made it seem like the arena was a separate tile. Is there any clue here? This is just a background. These are the... Okay, let's get back to this. There are these gates. There's two of these gates. Look like portcullis, but they're huge. I mean, if this is to scale, it's like takes up maybe three squares. I don't know if this is like some quasi like Inca type design here for these stone doors, but the rumor that we heard from Cristobal's source, maybe his source wasn't so reliable after all. I mean, it's not his fault, but that idea that they'd be cardboard doors looks like no there's there's four of them so instead of three cardboard there's four plastic oh wait oh i see now what people are saying they were saying that this is an undead archer i know a lot of people were saying oh we need skeletal archers we need skeletal archers skeletal archers please well maybe they finally made one but it looks of course it's in front of this gray background because of the furniture but is this the same color as this this looks like it's white or off-white. There's three of them. Maybe that is a skeletal archer. They do look kind of spindly. It's either that or some kind of like elf or something. But yeah, maybe it is a skeleton. And then this is beige. These giant ogres are beige. I never would have expected beige. But I mean, I guess it's the color of sand, maybe. <laughs> Stone, sandstone. And I think these ogres are probably just meant to be gray. I'm going to paint them blue. I don't care. I think they need to be dark blue, midnight blue, or cornflower blue. Xerxes says, hell yeah, skeleton archers. Leg is smaller than the boot is possible. Yeah, unless they've got like robotic legs or it's like a bug man or something. You can't see the face very well. It looks like maybe there's a hood or... Yeah, I don't know what it is. But then we've got these red figures. So the speculation was a female dwarf. Well, sorry, no female dwarf. But they do like like halflings. Halflings, of course, are just D and D changing the name from Hobbit to halflings to avoid copyright infringement from the Tolkien estate, Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. So it looks like a completely different sculpt in each case. And I'm guessing this is the male version, and that's the female version of the druid from the mythic tier. And then this is the beast form, which is a single uh, circle, single square uh, wolf the animal form of course you could also use this as a animal companion i suppose but since the um the warlock in the spirit queen's or i mean prophecy of telor retail version had a, uh, a gargoyle to use as the demon form i'm guessing that's what this is for there's only one to be shared because you don't have two druids at the same time but how i think it's the druid and not the female dwarf or some other type of hero fighter type or whatever is look at these cards here. This looks clearly like the animal form or beast form on the right. In the middle is the pixie. See, it looks very similar. And this is like the life force or the healing uh, one. So I think that's what that is. And these cards, okay, you've got whatever the archer is. Each of these different types of monsters. Oh, goblin, or I mean orc archers, different goblins, different ogres. All right. Uh, Elberg says, happy that this was going to be the dwarf quest pack is now debunked. Yeah, I'd rather see the dwarf quest pack be its own thing. If they ever did a dwarf quest pack or wizard's quest pack, I wanted to be something new or adapted from the original unreleased material. I'm with you 100% on that, Verg. 
I wouldn't want them to just say, oh yeah, the thing you got, that was the thing that you wanted, you know. <laughs> like people who try to say that Keller's Keep is, is the dwarf quest pack, and Return of the Witch Lord is the wizard quest pack. I mean, in the notes, the draft notes, when they were planning the dwarf quest pack that was never finished, I mean, I think it was Mike Gray, and people are speculating that's his full name, rather than just Mike G, but uh, he was saying, oh, the setting to the Dwarf Quest pack ought to be similar to Keller's Keep. So there is that, but they clearly meant it as something completely different. But yeah, I, I would be very surprised if the Druid had anything to do with this pack other than he's in the box. He, he and she are in the box. So it says contents, quest book featuring 10 quests. So there we go, 28 finely detailed miniatures, 29 game cards, 29 cardboard tiles. You might think, gee, wow. But you've got the distributions right there. So yeah, this is way more than we knew yesterday. And if it really, if the guy on eBay is correct, so somebody in Spain knows about this, some store that it's coming in April, well, which is pretty close to March 31st or March 1st. It's just off by one month. April Fool. But okay, so we've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13. Yeah. Yeah, 28 finely detailed miniatures. It's just that some of them are very large. We got the three large ogres, the large throne some pieces of furniture, some of which appear to be two or three squares wide. And the tiles. Oh, one thing that's missing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This was a, a late speculation. I mean, people have been speculating for 30 years about this to say, well, wouldn't it be better if instead of uh, tokens for the chaos spells, or dread spells in this case, there were cards? I don't see any spell cards here, but this large number of cards might mean that they're not using the tokens anymore for the spells. Kind of disappointed about that. I would have liked to have there to be those tokens again, because I think it can work. It's, I mean, we've already seen that they put tokens into Rise of the Dreadmoon and people were fine with that. Yeah, I don't see any special dice. Cards are behind the Ogre King Mini. Yes. So I wonder, do they just have, like, you know, Mind Lock, Mind Blast, and um, Dominate? Just three cards. How do they keep track of how many times you use them? I don't know. Maybe they thought the mechanic was clunky, just like um, Mike G and his team. Because they didn't like it. They didn't like the... Well, no. No, they were criticizing the bo variable body points. They weren't criticizing the, the tokens. But I know a lot of fans, like on Yield In, have said, oh, just, just print cards instead. Let's see. Xerxes says, totally agree on the Druid. If that is what is male, the sculpt is just a little confusing. Yeah, I mean, probably helps if you paint it. Um, 28 cards total, only 12 visible, so that's 16 more cards. Yeah, it looks like we see the monster cards, the Druid cards. And yeah, what what are the other cards? I mean, there could be potions. Uh, we kind of speculated they probably added a uh, alchemist shop, but there could be other things. Could be totally new things for the arena mode. Maybe there's cards used for that mode of play. I don't know if it uses cards. I don't know what they would be. Combat cards, maybe. I mean, I'm totally speculating. I have no idea. The portcullis looks like got grooves and the door came right off, leaving just the frame on the map to mark the opening. It says Bohemius. Yeah, and there's two of them. Maybe like to the gates, the gates to the uh, gladiator battle. Is Russell Crowe going to come out and ask everyone if they're entertained? Is that not why they're here? Why are you not entertained? Curious if any artifacts are added. There were none in the EU, correct? Yeah. Yeah, no no quest treasures that I know of. I think it was pretty much just 
you know, potions of healing and gold. I wonder if they'll retain those rules about playing the quest as a series or, or what. Okay. Well, anyway, there you go. I'm sure somebody else will get a better quality picture. I mean, whoever bought it um, could open it up and just do an unboxing, and then we would see everything. So whoever you are, lucky buyer, please hook us up. Let us know, because this is January 27th, and if it's coming out April 1st, or whatever, April 5th, let's say, we got plenty of time to wonder. So you could just show us everything. We would love someone to just spoil the heck out of this. Just show us everything... Any changes? It says 2024 here. The copyright information. I know you can barely read it. But it looks 100% real to me. Not a prototype. <laughs> it's like an ogre face. Or a monster face of some kind. Someone was commenting that the Pit of Chaos almost looks like it has a face. Could be pareidolia or it could be intentional. But yeah, the Stephen Baker interview from his Bazargon, at first I was concerned that maybe it would just be like the old interviews. He'd say the same stuff he always says. I mean, which is cool, but not anything new. But actually, a lot of the questions he was asked were really good. And I think his Bazargon had a big part to do in that as far as like what questions to send him. I mean, one of the things we learned is, despite what a lot of people speculated, he insists that walking up to treasure chests to open them was never... An intention with the game and i guess uh one of the things about the uh the original hero quest is what became advanced hero quest that that style of gameplay actually was planned for the original version the tiles like laying out tiles like a modular dungeon but it was just really hard for like new players to understand so then he went with the trifold board like axis and allies which i knew about that part but it was too expensive, and I think for one of the expansions, they were going to do, like, foam hex tiles with, like, cards that you'd insert into them. But, again, it was too expensive. So they ended up going with what you actually saw. And there was actually more people named in the interview than I'd heard of, and most of these people I've never heard of because I haven't followed, like, Games Workshop and uh, Milton Bradley history, so I don't necessarily know who they are. But yeah, it was a collaborative effort. So you could rightly call Stephen Baker the designer or even the inventor of Hero Quest, but that doesn't mean that you know everything he intended for the game is what happened. And it was cool to hear, like the Japanese version, I, you know, I think it was pretty clear that he had nothing to do with it. He wasn't against it. It was just that it was a it was a new team adapting the ideas, and he didn't have as much to do with the North American version or the. Um, against the Ogre Horde or Wizards of Morkar. But he said he left the company in 1992. But he did write The Dark Company. So because of some issues with the, the transcription, it's sometimes it's kind of hard to tell like exactly what was being said. Maybe, maybe the author can make some corrections. But yeah, it was uh, interesting. Interesting to hear. Because now, I mean, Stephen Baker, is, is, he's, he's a freelance vendor, I think is what Encarmine called him. So he's uh, like an advisor, he's like a consultant. Um, other than the quest that he wrote for the Mythic campaign, I mean, he didn't, he didn't create any of that other stuff. That was other people that did that. I mean, he was there, they could talk to him. But he understands and respects the fact that, you know, he doesn't uh, have complete control of the game. And he never did. He always understood it was a collaborative uh, pro production. Oh yeah, the thick black borders. Yeah. So it looks like there's thick black borders. I mean, it could be that these are not final, or it could be that they legitimately do. I mean, if you think about it, we look at the Hero Quest board, there's thick white borders around all the rooms. And those thick white borders are not always respected. You know, sometimes you're supposed to ignore them, and other times you're supposed to treat them as real solid walls. So that black, you could say, well, maybe that's carpeting or a shadow or something. Or you could say, yeah, those are walls. Those are actual walls. Let's see. 
Oh, okay. All right. Let me uh, scroll back. So Bohemia says, I heard a guy in Yield In Facebook bought it. Well, cool. I hope uh, everybody treat him with respect. He's got to know that people want to know information, but don't hound the poor guy. He just bought something and he spent a lot of money on it. So if he's willing to post an unboxing or photos showing what's on the, in the quest book, what's new, maybe what the rest of those cards are, we'd be very grateful to him. And if he posts it just on Facebook, I mean, I would say obscure the guy's name and then share it with uh, the rest of the community, please, because I'm not a member there. But also respect a person's privacy because, yeah, on Facebook, you can see people's private information and it's not always, well, it's not cool to release that without the permission. Got to be careful with that sort of thing. Okay, Fubar Jr., welcome everybody. Yeah, we're talking against the Ogre Horde. We had to cover this before the game, sorry. It's too big a note to ignore. Um, if they are druid sculpts, they do sort of remind me of early warlock sculpts from the Pulse Backer campaign. Ultimately, we found out eventually. Well, it looks like they're dressed in fur, or it could be leaves, and they're carrying these gnarled staff type implements that look like they have maybe a skull or like tree branches or vines or something on it or fur or bells or you know stuff that you would associate stereotypically with these these druid type characters from rpgs so that's why i'm thinking that's what they are because they could be anything really right they could be i don't know um they could be uh why am i not thinking oh um they could be gnome sorcerers, for all we know, right? And this could be uh, uh, an elven uh, wolf child or something. Like, I'm just making it up. But we're thinking because these are the druid cards, these look exactly like the artwork. We can't see the text at all. Is it changed? Is it, is it not? That indicate. And then we were just talking about how the demon form of the warlock being a, a red gargoyle, a red colored gargoyle in Prophecy of Telor, we were expecting something like this for Crypt of Perpetual Darkness's re release, but instead we get it here. But I like the fact that they're brand new. So someone who wanted the druid can get it, but it's not going to, you know, make anybody who bought the collector version like upset about it. So you still get the gameplay, but you get actually some better looking sculpts to me. Because honestly, the, the original design got a lot of criticism. It was like, this looks cheesy. This doesn't look like it fits with Hero Quest. Does this look more like it fits with Hero Quest? I don't know, maybe. But yeah, making it a halfling, a small character, because the druid was just, she just looked like a woman wearing fur and leaves and, you know, vines and stuff like that. It's like long hair and a staff. That's basically what she looked like. So maybe combining the two types of characters. But the Avalon Hill team has, in their artwork, done this before. They have showed us that, okay, the Guardian Knights look like these two, the specific man and the specific woman. But then actually there's a whole room full of like all kinds of variations of like humans and elves and orcs. You know, there's a guy with uh, bandages over his, his eyes. Maybe he's a blind sword fighter. I mean, there's all these people who are guardian knights. And then on the card artwork for the monk, yes, we've got the two monks, the male and the female, but then on the artwork, they show like all kinds of different designs. So I think that's just to kind of help your role-playing mindset or your painting inspiration to say, yeah, just because a figure looks one way doesn't mean that the character you imagine them to be has to look exactly like that. They could look like something totally different. Let's see. They look like wild halflings. So that means this must be the HQP. HQP hero quest pack? Halfling quest pack. Okay, sorry, I'm getting getting uh, bogged down. Okay, let me uh, cover these comments, and I think pretty soon we can move to the actual game. Fubar says, and I think those were warlock pre-production before they got the guest sculptors. Maybe. So you think this is maybe an un unused concept? from before looks pretty developed though it doesn't i mean the first druids that we saw were very simple and they got more and more comp complex and 
decorative later on. Jafflings and ogres are connected to the old Games Workshop lore. Yeah, they all are. Because they're all connected and similar to D&D, which is connected and similar to um, Lord of the Rings. I mean, not connected officially, but I mean, clearly inspired from. They want to evoke that same feel. And Conan the Barbarian. Okay. Well, we do have that Jungle's Deltrak is coming. So possible of tokens and other items may be included. Like Dread Moon. Or do we say just like Dread Moon, 30 year milestone Deltrak will be the same? All new ways to play, says Xerxes. I don't know. Maybe. Sir Make My Day says, don't want the Pinkertons knocking on his door. Well, yeah, we definitely don't want that. I, I would hope, now that you mentioned that, I would hope against hope that Hasbro would not make that same mistake twice. I mean, this is not Wizards of the Coast. This is Avalon Hill. So my understanding, it's much more close to uh, Hasbro Gaming, to the main company, rather than like a far off office somewhere. So if they would drop the hammer down on this guy, like trying to, you know, scare him or whatever, that would really be a scandal. They would look really bad if they did something like that. Because it wouldn't be his fault. It would be the fault of the store that sold it to him. So that's a business, not an individual. I mean, going after a person, a fan, would be really dumb. But anyway, regardless, yeah, I hope both the seller and the buyer are fine and they don't deserve to be harassed by fans or by the company for this. If anybody deserves a slap on the wrist, it would be the, the company that sold it, in my opinion. I'm not a lawyer. No Pinkertons. No pitchforks, no Pinkertons. That should be a t-shirt for HeroQuest fans community. So a lot of rumor and speculation, but I think this is finally some hard evidence rather than just a promise. Promises are nice, but looks like if their point was to show us something very original, this is, this is fulfilling that promise. So I can't help but think you know, Avalon Bill and Chris Nato and Carmine, they were still with the company when this was created. So I think that guidance, leadership, and collaboration um, can be attributed to them as, as well as the rest, I'm sure. I'm, I think that's not much of a stretch, stretch to say that. Get it? Big ogres. Nice. And before for, folks start speculating that the three quests will include a Druid solo quest, this is fire, insane job. Better than I could have imagined. Yeah. I mean, do I like these designs? I mean, they look like big, scary monsters, which is what you want ogres to be. Would this be these be fun to paint? I imagine so. Am I that excited about the druid? Honestly, I've never used the druid in, in a quest yet, so I don't know what I think of that character. I mean, seems fine, I guess. Did we really need sculpts of alternate goblins and orcs no we didn't the sculpts don't look that exciting but they are different and i mean they will immediately say oh this guy's got a ranged attack watch out which is what they're trying to do you could always use your imagination but what's the difference between the the uh skeletal archers let's say and the orc archers is it just an orc attacks with three, so he attacks with three at a distance as well. The skeletal archer attacks with two, and he attacks at two at a distance. That makes sense. But then what about these goblins? Goblins attack with two, attack with two at a distance. Well, I guess both a goblin and a skeleton both have one body point each. A skeleton is considered undead, so you can kill him with holy water. But why would you want to waste holy water on a skeleton? Well... Maybe because he's a ranged attacker and maybe he's more of a threat than just a regular enemy. That could be a reason. Um, does the bomb that the goblin throws, does that do anything different than just like a regular arrow? Does it have some area of effect? Is it a smoke bomb? Does it, I don't know, what, what does it do? <laughs> you know, maybe it's the same. What does the boomerang do? Is it just aesthetic or does it uh, have some ability? Does he get multi multiple attacks? I mean, you could just imagine all kinds of possibilities. But for all we know, these are just, you know, oh, you don't want to use a regular goblin? Then use this goblin. Because you could just point to a regular goblin and say, yeah, this guy's got a ranged attack. 
Fubar says, it is curious that there are two Three with Wolf heroes in the box. You haven't done that outside of just a hero expansion. That's true. But maybe maybe they thought there isn't as much demand. Think about this. Yeah, with the others you could say they're trying to just pack as much mythic stuff into the boxes as possible. But maybe there just wasn't that much demand for the Bard as a hero collection, so they thought we'll just throw him in here. He'll be fine because people buy the whole pack. Same thing with the Warlock. And they do it for the Druid, but maybe they just thought the Druid design isn't that good, so let's do it. Hey, welcome. Okay, guys, I was just on a roll there. Hi, Jacer. Hi, Bohemius. Have you been here long? I wasn't watching the quest talk. I should have. You want to add your thoughts oh. before we get started? Well, we can start then. Yeah. My thought is that is a beautiful box and you can really feel the uh, the love <laughs> of Carmina here put into it yeah not to say mm -hmm. all his work but under his leadership his team putting it yeah, together yeah that is what i mean he uh these uh, anyways his vision no yeah the yeah. all Guiding. work together yep mm. but yeah. he put quality put quantity everything uh is required to do a, a good yeah. package. All right. Yep. And Xerxes says, I think we need more range attack monsters, right? Currently, do we have enough? <laughs> you can never have enough. Quest calls for them and had specific attack dice each. Well, you can always use your imagination. The original version didn't have any special. I mean, do you really need... Like, where's the mummy with the bow? Where's the zombie with the bow? Where's the um, abomination with a, you know, a sling or whatever? You know, <laughs> do you really need that? I mean, it'd be cool, I guess. It'd be fun to paint if you're painting everything, but do you really need it? I'm sure with each of these, they had to decide: okay, do we use this character or this character? Or we've got this much space left. Okay, what do we put here? Because I'm sure they've got other designs that they're just not using that are just sitting there waiting be put somewhere fit somewhere like a puzzle piece which one's going to sell the most which one's going to sell the product elberg says you can use your imagination with a lot of things and it's a nice added value it makes it easy to distinct in gameplay and yes this isn't a quest for it where are my ranged mummies with curse attacks they throw they throw wads of gross bandages at you <laughs> yeah well Hero Quest does a lot for you. It gives you pla 3D plastic miniatures for furniture and characters. It gives you colorful tiles. It does all the stuff for you. You know, special dice. But that stuff also inspires your imagination even more because you can make any figure into anything else. But it might give you ideas to say, oh yeah, maybe that bomb that he throws does this, that, or the other thing. <laughs> Versus just, yeah. Whatever I want to say the goblin has in his hand is what he has in his hand for this quest or this quest note. And yes, you can distinguish them. Exactly. You could have a group of regular goblins. Yeah, that's true. You could have like a, a room full of goblins and maybe some of them are just regular goblins and some of them are these bomb throwing goblins or these boomerang goblins. You could have a bunch of orcs. That's what I was saying with the um, Rise of the Dread Moon with the uh, the Magus Guards, like you could have Chaos Warriors and Magus Guards side by side, and so, you know they have different abilities, and you you're not limited to just two of them. You could have six. I don't think any quests actually called for that many, or did they? No spoilers. <laughs> but yeah, you could because uh, it, it's it's a platform for you to create your own adventures too. It's not just what's in the box. Maybe you don't think they went far enough. You take it the the rest of the distance. Mummy used a TP <laughs> ranged attack. Roll your defense dice, Barbarian. The Barbarian would catch it and go, what is this fantastic invention? <laughs> now you can start imagining. This archer has frost arrows. This one has fire arrows. Holy water arrows. Think about it. You don't need blue and red versions of each archer. It expands it. Adds value and gameplay to make original quests more difficult to vary by adding them in. Yes. Very true. All right, Jaser, you got any... Uh... Oh, you did make some comments. Here we go. 
Abomination has a spear. Fair enough. Yeah, you can throw a spear. Crossbow ranged. Elven archer ranged. Yeah, that's true. We do have ranged monsters already in the form of the crossbowmen, because they can be good or bad. The elven archers. Yeah, we definitely have quite a few of those, because there's some in both Mage of the Mirror and Rise of the Dreadmoon. So we do have ranged monsters. We just didn't have variations of the ones we'd already seen in sculpted form. Because somebody asked me, on, I think it was on Yield In, at one point, they said, well, when have we ever seen orc archers before? Or orc crossbowmen before? And I was like, well, they're, they're pretty common, aren't they? And then I looked back at the official quests, and actually, no, they're not. They're only used officially, I think, in this one, and against the Ogre Horde. I mean, there's a lot of fan-made quests that, that do it. So, now there will be many. Yes. Okay, well, are, are we, uh, are we, have we run out of <laughs> things to say for the moment for this? So we for use... once, I'm uh, actually happy that the leaks are not true. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because yeah. the, um, the, the leaks from LaGuardia de Morcar, Cristobal, um, Again, I'm not blaming him because you hear you hear a rumor and you're, it's like, is it true? Is it not? Who knows? But I'm going to tell you anyway. I'm going to report it. Turned out not to be true. And I don't think any of. Well, let's see. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Zero. No, not even no. one. <laughs> no. Yeah, because not even one. I mean, I was thinking. Well, if you look at that gate, I mean, you might. If you're just looking at it without context, you might think, well, maybe that's the door to a treasure yeah. chest or something, yes. but that's about it. Yeah, it could, yeah, it could look like, but uh, I don't know. My, no. my guess is this work. person probably uh, work, okay, there, yeah, with, with them maybe doing translation, and they give them text. What you do is just guess and base on the text they give him. Ah. Okay, so it doesn't have the entire picture of the uh oh, yeah, of so maybe you can't. Oh, yeah. So it's not that maybe mm -hmm. they were trying to like lie on purpose to fool us, but yeah, yeah maybe some, they didn't. Somebody is helping with translation. Somebody maybe he's not even working with them. You understand? Yeah. Somebody they have access to this. Like, uh, like listen, this. listen. It clearly says this is a troll. So <laughs> now trolls are in the game. It's like ah uh, no, actually that's the elf. It's like oh exactly. no. <laughs> Well, well, that's what I was speculating. It's it's a whole like yeah, almost meta speculation. It's to say, okay, well, maybe they thought dwarf fighter. Oh, it's a mm -hmm. halfling druid, care you know, warrior or something like. Okay, so maybe yeah, just it was a, a similar type of concept, but actually, it's just something totally different once we see what it really is. Yeah, or maybe. Yeah, they just had other things that we're going to see in other packs that have nothing to do with this one. And they just wrongly assumed that it was part of this one. I'm just trying to think. Any of the stuff that we... Yeah, well, exactly. It's, it's exactly what I mean. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean that the rest... is just uh, for them, it's jumbled up. And they try to give a sense mm -hmm. of what they read. I don't see any dwarven furniture here. Do you? No. <laughs> no. But the door, I think the door with furniture were giant. Yes. Not, <laughs> yeah. Not yeah, it was, well, yeah, there's things that fans say they want. Like lots of requests for skeletal archers. Well, there you go. Lots of requests for more big monsters. Well, the the Dread Wraith was big. These guys are big. And the Frozen Horror is still the biggest. And uh, let me just say right here, right now, that Ogre Throne would make a great mimic. <laughs> just saying. It's like, ah, we've killed the we've killed the the power yep. of the throne. Nope, no, you haven't. The power behind the throne now <laughs> looms large. Oh no. <laughs> it's like the king wasn't really the one who ruled the country, it was actually the throne he sat on. <laughs> so, uh, he was my puppet. We, <laughs> no. Me and Ruby, we were uh, very 
very happy when they when they show the throne because it's made of stone. So <laughs> throne of stone. we expect exactly yeah. a cube of stone. <laughs> it's made of uh, it's made of uh, perfect, very light bamboo. It's like okay, that's not <laughs> no. You went through more it's, thrones. Stone, or maybe that's like a, a furry top. beanbag chair. Yeah. <laughs> or, it, well, it's just it's a bunch of ogres that are just like holding him up. He's just sitting on the <laughs> sitting on their backs or something. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah. A living throne <laughs> of just a mount a mound of skulls. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, more more comments. Always open for more variety in the monsters for the heroes to fight. More strategies in Xerxes. Yes. Elberg said, I said on Discord, the ogres from Mage of the Mirror are going to mix and match with these nicely. Yeah, I agree. You could definitely swap them in. See, now I'm going to have to paint these guys to match. Well, have to. I want to. <laughs> I wish they would have just used dark blue, but whatever. Okay. Vorticon. Hey, it says it'd be cool to have equipment cards like the bow or boomerang for the heroes to use. Yeah, loot the body. Take the weapon. Yeah, weapons. I don't see any weapons racks. So much for that idea. I mean, you could still use the original. There's a weapons rack in the middle of the, you know, arena. Go get get your weapon. Elverg says, would love to have some leather armor equipment options, to be honest. AKA non-metal armor. Okay, but no studded leather, please. Just kidding. Or am I? <laughs> uh, the bracer, in a way, they are. Made of leather, yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah. I was always hoping it would be made of magical metal. I mean, come on, it's the it's the bracelets of uh, Wonder Woman. That's what it really is. What we need is actually boots, boots. different boots with different abilities. Not the not boots the of speed. But yeah, <laughs> like yeah, Legacy of Sorosil. Because you... we have boots, but they're all scattered around the uh, boots of slowness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a joke. They they fasten to your feet, and you have to move slower. It forces you to drink oh, well, more grog. If you, if you combine a, a pair of boots that give you a plus two movement and the uh, iron plate, okay, I, it's yep. very, it's very good. You yep. can you can play. You can still play. Or what if the boots make you so fast that you like crash into things, or your feet burn up? So you have to get something else yeah. that slows you down just enough so that you can. Well, uh, <laughs> Glasgow found the the boots okay to go fast and burn them the first time uh... <laughs> that's true he did the first uh, one <laughs> yep uh elberg says it would love to have oh yeah you already read that okay fubar jr from those early reports or this box ebay listing could have been misleads to find leaks clearly avalon hill and or hasbro has some in places be a good touch yeah there's always that possibility i always wondered yeah, they're trying to find the leaks, so they give some false information mixed with some true information. But yeah, like like you were saying, I mean, other than maybe the dwarf warrior, dwarf fighter thing, seems like they didn't they didn't score on this one. It's incorrect. And I'm trying to think of the jungles of Delthrax stuff that people were speculating about. I mean, that was all about abominations and swamp men and crocodile type monsters, right? Wasn't it? I don't see. Anything I don't know what to like. believe. Yeah, but I mean that sort of well, that, because... that sounds like the sort of thing that fans would think. You know, okay, well, what are they going to give us? Okay, maybe, maybe it's some kind of Inca, Mayan, you know, Babylonian imagery, Egyptian. I don't know. I mean, all the I fantasy stuff I'm, is I'm, I changed, inspired by. Change my ideas. You uh, I send you the mm -hmm. the the map or the the one that yeah. I think the inspiration is not going to be uh, Aztec or whatever. It's going to be more Indonesian, uh, and they will care more about that part of the world this time. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, just to, to just to differ from from the, uh, the Games Workshop because Games Workshop got all the lizardmen they are Aztec, lizard so they yeah, cannot right. copy exactly the same stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's all coming in some loose, jumbled way from Earth history and Earth legend, anyway. So yeah, I just you just pick different legends or different artwork yeah. or different cultures to like draw from as your inspiration for your fantasy creation. 
Yeah. I want to see an ogre like with a, a top hat and a monocle and a <laughs> tail coat. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, maybe. You know. Good day, Mo- sir. Modern quest. Yes. <laughs> I challenge you to a duel. It takes off his little white glove. <laughs> Yep. He's got one of those canes that has the little like crystal ball on the <laughs> end of it. Ogre Alchemist Hero. Okay, well I think I've pretty much expended what I wanted to say, and I'm sure there's more speculation to be had. There may be more reveals coming up. I'm sure uh, all of our friends, Ash Quest, always bored, never boring, Jordan Sorcery, Dungeon Master, uh, who else? Why am I suddenly forgetting like the names of all these people? But yeah, like all those YouTubers are gonna like pick this apart and come up with things that I didn't think of. But it's all good. It's all part of the game. It's all part of the chase. A top hatted ogre will sing <laughs> putting on the ritz. Yes. There's a card. It says put on the ritz. You know, it's like, oh no. All his abilities are increased. He's got so much money, he just like, yeah, he can buy buy anything. You can hire more mercenaries to to fight you. He challenges you to uh, gamble. To gamble. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we've burned an hour, but now we are back in Rise of the Dread Moon. You guys ready for this? Uh, Yes. All right. Okay. That's what we've all been waiting for. So, got our heroes... Uh, Bohemius, you want to do the wizard again? Yes. <laughs> All right, he's taken off his disguise. And it looks like he's used three of his spells total. Do you have any other questions about what he's got at the moment? Uh, should be unchanged. I should, yeah, I should be updated already. Thank okay. You. And it looks like the striker is under his control and has been given a potion of warmth that he could use. Now, this yeah. is kind of in the way, so I last time I just kind of set these down just to show that you can see more stuff. Uh, Jacer, you want to take the dwarf and the monk again? Uh, yes, okay. please. So it looks like we've got an arbalist or crossbowman uh, in the room, and the glaive is in the hallway. Glaive has taken one body point of damage. Oh, I forgot to note that here. The opposite. Oh, no. Okay. Any question about your characters there, uh, Jacer? Uh, no. Okay. And I think we left off on Zargon's turn, right? Yes, we did. Okay. Well, you guys are in big trouble because I've got this uh, zombie here, so... You know, it was it was uh, fine. It was it was good while it lasted, but uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. We'll just move the zombie forward to attack the monk. One skull. Right, blocked it. Ah, just barely. I think I'm out of uh, I'm out of techniques too, so that's all I got. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. Do your best, heroes. It looks like Bohemius has the championship belt as the wizard, so just keep that in mind. Yeah. So I just put it. So the pot with both striker and uh, laser. So, wait, say that again. Oh, are you controlling both characters? Or are you gonna pass with them? You're not gonna. I'm going to pass with both. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I cannot do anything because they uh, the door yeah. is blocked. Yeah. Uh, there's a space next to the uh, diagonal from the yeah. door if you want to try to hit but him with your staff. You, but then you cannot attack with the uh, 
did work, so it's better that I stay put. Okay. Okay. Oh, I should adjust this so I could see it a little better. Sorry. I'm not sure if you, Ribby was able to fix the issue we were having with the dice. Let me just test it real quick. This is not an official roll here. Oh, he fixed it. Yay, Ribby! Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Yeah, before it was uh, it was scrunching up the dice. Uh, unless you were on a phone, which I'm not. Okay. All right, so so wizard passes, and now the dwarf. Can you see that okay, or uh, do you need a closer closer look? I can see it okay. Uh, the dwarf's going to move one to the right then and attack diagonally. All right. Dwarf moves in. Um, I guess I'll be dropping my disguise as well and using the longsword. Okay, drop, drop in the disguise. Yeah, I, I thought I fixed the alerts, but maybe I, maybe I didn't. That's really annoying. Like, it, I had all these extra, it's like it, it keeps creating extra entries, and they're blank, so they don't, it, it looks to those and doesn't work but I don't know why it's not working now it's on center a little bit okay so you missed hey man we have a combat dice uh, color change oh I'm sorry about that Wordicon for the zombie attack oh my bad okay let's backtrack and I'm, I'm glad you said that I'm glad you said that because I was I was way off okay So instead of one skull, let's see what he got. And we'll we'll have you redo your defense as well. Not that it matters that much. Orange. Ah. <laughs> he missed. He missed. So you wouldn't have had to roll defense. Okay. No his name is John Cena. Da, 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 da. Uh the Arbalist. Really can't do much. No. Um, I'm gonna have the the monk attack. Okay. All right. Also for one. Okay, one skull. Got him. All right, destroyed the monster. Uh, have the glaive move. I guess five spaces towards the trap door. Okay. All right, and um, that'll end my turn. Yeah, and bear in mind that trap door does lead back to the weapons rack room, which is where you met the. Um, the guy who became the halberdier from last quest, or from last session, I should say. Okay. This is quest five of Rise of the Dreadmoon, Pandemonium in the Streets. And Carl Casey, at White Bat Audio, had the music. This is not a. This is not an open door. This is a closed door. My mistake there. Sorry. That room is not revealed yet. Does that change your... Uh, yeah, your could I have the... Instead of going five spaces towards that thing, because we're not going back there to search, uh, to have him go six spaces towards the monk instead. Where do you want him to end up? Uh, as close to the monk as he can. 
It has to go all the way around the hallway, right? And then in that other door? Well, right here there is a, a secret door. Oh, that's the secret door. Okay. Yeah, I know. It probably looked like a, a damaged tile, but it's not. Um, Room's getting crowded, yeah. Toward, towards the close... Uh, one, two, three, two, four, two, five. Four, five. The diagonal five. from that closed door. Yes. Okay. Oh, the oh, I forgot to move the monk. Uh, just have the monk move one step in that room. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, that'll end my turn. Yep. All right, sounds good. Do we have any? If anybody's watching us on Twitch, uh, we're live on Twitch. Um, you can actually join in if you want to take control of another hero. Uh, we don't have anybody controlling the barbarian, but he did. Since he is kind of vital to the mission, do you guys mind uh, helping me out here and just continuing to control the barbarian? Sure. Okay. If you get him killed, well, sorry, Ribby. You went to all that trouble fixing the <laughs> dice, and then this is how we repay you. Okay. So last we f we uh, found the barbarian. He still had his disguise. He's the only one that still does. And yet, he has formed this friendship with the uh, halberdier, who was uh, proprietor of the shop with the with the uh, weapons rack, and he was being severely beaten <laughs> by bad guys until he was rescued. And then he uh, helped the barbarian understand the value of his star-shaped amulet, which was able to open this door, which then revealed the chest, which gave him many riches. All right, guys, so what do you want uh, him to do? Uh, moving 12 uh, to the uh, uh, to the front door. Okay. Yeah, there was a uh, an actual trap on the trap door, but the proprietor made sure he threw the safety switch so the heroes could get through fine. Oh, we're doing Barbarian first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... Whoops. He goes through and comes out on the other side. Ending his turn. And the mercenary is going to follow him. Try to get close as possible to the... Oh, come back, you young fella. Two, three, four, <laughs> six. I skipped leg day throughout my entire career. And this is what happened. All right. Okay, Zargon's turn. Okay, looks like no help there. Let me just draw a card. Jacer, what's your favorite card in the Evil Wizard deck? <laughs> My least favorite is probably Log Trap. Why is that the one you drew? <laughs> Yep. Yep. <laughs> but this time you didn't call it because you only say, "Well, I hope it's not a log trap." <laughs> yeah. Uh... Okay. Pick any three squares in a row on the board. Any hero monster on the squares must roll one combat die. They lose one body point on a skull. Suddenly, a spiked log rolls from the ceiling. Okay. All right. So... My monk is going to use luck. Luck. Okay. Yes. All right. You hear uh, a bunch of like clanking sounds and like this this rusted like you know termite eaten log trap like pathetically like falls in a bunch of pieces to the ground, scaring everyone but not actually doing any damage. Okay, excellent. <laughs> I didn't even get to pick uh, who who I was gonna crush with it because I was thinking oh I could go here or well I guess that would have been the best for me. To go for the dwarf and the arbalist, but it's nullified. Well, yeah, the dwarf and the arbalist, or the wizard. Well, it could go through the doorway, I guess. It hit oh the yeah, wizard you're and right. The monk. I could hit both of them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, and, I, and I put the other two diagonally on purpose, <laughs> <laughs> just to try to spread them out, and so that that monk wasn't three in a row going up and down. Or the more uh, brutal option is. <laughs> the barbarian runs away and then it oh! <laughs> he just gets crushed by it. <laughs> well, it wouldn't it, it probably wouldn't have killed him cuz it at most it would do one body point, but still. It's like 
You. <laughs> oh, yeah. you. They don't make log traps like they used to. All right, hero's turn. Oh, I'm going to move uh, uh, three square to the right. Actually, put me in front of the uh, the closed door. Here. All right. And search the uh, table. Ah. He turns. Okay. It is a sorcerer's table. And let's see what you find. Okay. Looks like there's many materials here. It could be used to reconstruct one of your previously used spells using your alchemical knowledge. So which spell would you like to recover? Which one I used until now? Three, you said. Uh, You've used Courage, Rosh. Rock Skin, and Fire of Wrath. Rock Skin is still, is still active? Oh, I, I guess it is still, still active. active. So could you get it again? <laughs> okay, so fine. Let's just say <laughs> no, Courage but... and... Okay, how about this? Well, again, yeah. Courage you can recover or... one, right? Yes, you can recover one. I'll, I'll take Fire of Wrath. Fire of Wrath. Okay, you've got Fire of Wrath no, again. It's, yeah, it's the same. I think we are at the end. It's just in case uh, we find um, a ghost. Ah, yes. Yeah, because they're especially vulnerable to magic yeah. as opposed to regular weapons oh that's it uh the uh, the striker entered the room and go one north and four left uh, right sorry yep okay all right the striker Alright, the monk is going to move three spaces so that he's in the corner south of the monk. And he's going to search that room for treasure. I'm sorry, you want him here? No, I, I want the dwarf to be south of the monk. Oh, sorry. Dwarf south of the monk. Yes. And, and ah, the shield. And, the, the hero shield, yep. So he's going to search for treasure? Yes, he is. All right. You asked for it. Let's see that hazard card, because that's the only thing that could get him. Nope. Gold. A rummage through several items of clothing reveals 20 gold coins. Hopefully those items of clothing were not the pockets of the characters next to him. <laughs> Do not return this card to the deck. All right. 20 gold coins. And I think you've exhausted all the bonus searches from last time. So you've got 1,077 gold. Dwarf? Okay. All right, how about your mercenaries? So with the... Reminder. I guess put the put the crossbowman right above the wizard. Okay. okay. Just a reminder: right. only only the the glaive and the striker both have been wounded, but the um the striker has a potion in case he gets in trouble. Okay. All right. Uh, the monk will get his techniques back, and he will use the earth technique and search for traps and secret doors. Okay. All right. So in this room, there are no traps and no secret doors. Send out okay. some loves, this foobar. Ah, threat card for Zargon. I like it. Thank you. Uh, the glaive will stay where he's at. And I'll 
pass the turn to you. Okay. Actually, Barbarian first. Oh, yeah, Barbarian. So, the Rebinator move uh, yes, the Rebinator. inside the room with the rest of the people. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where do you want him to end up? Here? Or? Uh, by, by the side of the, uh, the monk, his right side. And and the merchant move it toward the uh, the prop door. Oh, these heroes! One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom, 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 boom. All right, he's transported through his safety tunnel to be there. Okay. Your turn. All right. Here, let's draw another card. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Fubar. See, I, I wish these alerts were working. It would be so much easier. I thought I fixed them. I'm so sorry. Okay. Skill card for hero. For whoever needs one. Heroic sacrifice. You take the blow intended for another member of your party. Must be adjacent to the left or right, well, I'd say up or down, your comrade to perform this feat. So, who wants the heroic sacrifice? Nobody wants it. <laughs> Does the ribbonator want it? I could, I could uh, yeah. give it to the dwarf. He's got a decent yeah. amount of Good body points. Dwarf. Yeah. Okay, so he's got Slip, Mighty Blow, and now Heroic Sacrifice. Right? Uh, Mighty Blow, Slip, yep, and Heroic blow. Sacrifice. Ah, so for once, <laughs> you didn't... It's like, ah, actually, I used that already. It's like, I, I sometimes forget to cross off the skills. Okay. The Monk still has Heroic Charge. But used up luck. Yep. And the Barbarian has Rally. Oh, Rallying Cry. Didn't write the whole thing down. And the Wizard has Careful Aim. Okay. Um, three, four, five. Okay. I was in the midst of drawing a card, wasn't I? Good. All right, heroes. Opening the door. Oh, I've been uh, I've been pressing the wrong button. No wonder it's not showing. Okay, sorry. The threats are incorrect. Should be. <laughs> and then I laugh for real. Okay. All right. Heroes. The wizard opened the door. All right. Excellent. Door opens. All right. There's an alchemist bench. And there's an elven archer in the room. He sees the wizard and is like, stay back. Wizard, uh, what, does, it, does it look uh, aggressive? Yeah, he's pointed. He's, he's got his, at me. Okay, he's got his bow. He's ready to ready to knock an arrow and 
take out, take you out. Uh, you, you look, uh, you look like an enemy to him. <laughs> I'll cast a genie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Three. Cool. Three. All right. Okay, let's see. What does he defend with again? Let's have to check. Uh, only two. Ooh, okay. Okay, so he blocked one, got hit by two. He's still alive, but he's heavily damaged. And they move to square inside the... There's no doors. Weird. I enter inside with the wizard. The squares. Okay, so two straight in? Yeah. Okay. The uh, striker go in the corner, in the left corner of the, the room, and attack. All right. That's the... All right, he immediately cuts down the, the archer with a stealth blow. Didn't even see it coming. Okay. Uh, because we got this guy. Okay. All right. Your turn, uh, Jason. Unless you've got some reagents you wanted to uh, cash in at this point. Well, I just attack. So it doesn't count as a. Uh... I don't think it counts as an action. Does an it? action? Okay, let's do it. All right. So you've got, let's see. Yeah. Got a mystic flower and a. And I think. No. We've got only one. Mysterious flower. Mystic yeah. flower. Yeah, I think the other ones Mysterious. are held by other heroes. Have, uh, the monk has two sacred plants. I can hand them to you when I, I get in there. Oh, sure. What can I uh, craft okay. uh, with a mystic, with a my, mysterious okay. flower? Yep. Uh, you can craft a potion of dexterity or a potion of defense. Dexterity. Okay, dexterity. Dexterity? Okay. Yep. All right. We'll cross that off and put dexterity. So you've got two of those now. Yeah, I see, let's see. Yeah, two sacred plants held by the monk and also a potion of unforeseen fate. Anybody else have anything? Let's see. Nope, not at this time. Okay. All right, next, dwarf. I'm going to stand to the left of the wizard and search that room for treasure. All right. No, the other left of the wizard. Oh. <laughs> and yes, yeah, search for treasure. Jewels. You find a small wooden box. Simple looking, very old. Within you discover it's lined with velvet. It contains very small jewels worth 50 gold coins. All right. 1127. That's the year he was born. Just kidding. All right, great. The arbalist will go just north of the dwarf. The monk will just step in that, or uh, will just step in that room, and he will use his earth technique to search for traps and secret doors. Ah, because there were no monsters, so it reset again. Okay. 
and the glaive does nothing? Uh, the glaive uh, depends on what the monk finds. Ah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, I guess I haven't been that strict with the mercenary turns this time, but it's it's all good either way. That's what you intend. Well, I have the yeah. Well, yeah, I have the glaive I guess assigned I to the monk. I didn't have so... another gold rim. That's probably what I should, probably should have used orange. <laughs> Here, I'll do that. Maybe that'll make a little more sense. Cheers, Ribby. Who is working on new things? Okay. Yeah, I write, wrote their uh, mercenary down with their skills and what quest that they were for. That's cool. Because we've been using them a lot as one... Uh, only been paying for the one yeah. quest for mercenary. Yeah, because you can use... I mean, you guys have five of these reputation tokens. I mean, you can use one to retain a merc for life. <laughs> Essentially, unless Tilly's dismissed. Um, but yeah, you can also just pay gold. I mean, because you have lots of gold. Whatever you think is best. Okay, so you're searching for traps. And, you and find now he's more convenient to use gold. Yeah, you find no traps to save that reputation, and you find a secret door. Okay. Right here. All right, I am going to move my glaive over to that. Uh, secret door. All right. One, two, three, four. Or maybe one south of that secret door. Five. And before that, the monk is going to pass the two sacred plants to the alchemist. Okay. All right. He hands them carefully to the alchemist, who uh, picks them up, studies them carefully. Sits down at his table, begins to work, doing his MacGyver thing. Okay, so. And uh, I'm also going to pour my potion of alchemy on one of the alchemist daggers. Ah, excellent. Okay. <laughs> so he's going to give it to him and tell him to use it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I don't think I have anything really worth making gold. <laughs> so, uh, Bohemius, are you cool with that? So we cross off one of your daggers and give you an extra 100 gold coins because it's now something you can sell for that amount? Sure. All right. So now you've got 1375. Okay, Potion of Alchemy is used up. All right, and that makes it the Barbarian turn. Oh, uh, let's see. Push it off. Okay, there it is. Crossed it off. <clears throat> and gave him both the sacred plants. Oh, did you give him the Unforeseen Fate as well? No, I'm going to hang on to that potion. Hang on to it. Okay. Sounds good. Because anybody can drink that one. Yeah, I believe so. It's a random draw. Yeah. So. You might get a reagent, but still, some of those reagents can be used for things, like get one body point back or something. Yeah. And because you're allowed to use it on, as a death save, I think it's pretty it's unique and pretty cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's, there's a chance you can heal, or there's a chance that it'll do something else. Grog! Oh no! Yeah. At least I had grog. The grog. <laughs> That's true. That's what they intended. Yeah. So well, and also grog. is there's a like if you're attacking and I'm a, and like get real high, I could drink that hoping for a potion of defense or something else too. So even if it's not a health, it has a chance to help me before. That's a thought. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I just figure in the monk's hands anything can happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it would be weird if, let's say you're fighting, let's say a monster is attacking the wizard while he's at the table. I always thought that was a weird situation. Like, don't interrupt me. <laughs> like, it, maybe he could quickly, like, uh, he's slamming those potions, hoping that he gets something, anything. <laughs> yeah, it's a last uh, desperate, desperate move. Desperation move. Okay. All right. So he moved there. And then, sorry, I got, got distracted with my 
speculation there. Okay, so the Barbarian? Are we up to the Barbarian? I was just thinking if you want, more. maybe they, uh, when that Alchemist becomes like uh, the 10 Quest champion, maybe he could distill the Unforeseen Fate into any potion he wants. <laughs> that would be pretty You know what I mean? Yeah, it's I mean, it's not like it ha it'll happen often, but... It's an idea. I'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I'm reading that right. He can uh, he can craft potions pretty much any time. Or is it just on his turn? Or is it once per turn? They really give him the, the, the power to craft. Yeah. L like, let me... I don't know. There's, there's no limitation. You can do it in his turn, I guess. But uh, the only limitation is that one. Yeah, let me double check. You can do it in yeah, because... yeah, in between quests, and he can. Oh, yeah. uh, I guess he could do as many as he wants in between the quests and yeah. in rooms with an alchemy table. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not misremembering because I liked the way they did it. I like. I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, between quests or while adjacent to an alchemist bench, the wizard may transform a reagent into one of the potions listed on the reagent card. Some reagents can be made into different kinds of potions or more than one potion. Using a reagent kit allows any hero adjacent to an alchemist bench to craft potions from reagents. The wizard does not need a reagent kit to craft potions. After crafting, the hero records the potion on the character sheet. Once the potion has been made, the reagent has been used up and may not be used again. Do not return the card to the deck until the end of the quest. Yeah, I guess you could you could interpret that very strictly and say it's just one, rather than one at a time. But it just says while adjacent. So if you want to say one per turn, still. Or one, yeah, when it's someone else's turn, oh, he can do another one. <laughs> Next turn, he can do another one. Yeah, I, I didn't think about it like that. I thought it was kind of like worded similar to like the way that you can just drink as many potions as you want. You yeah, could just okay, craft right. as long as you're adjacent to the table. Yeah, it's it's one of those things just like, like I just allowed you to pass two items. Whereas some would read the rules very strictly and say it says pass a potion or one of your yeah. potions so it only one per turn yes versus right do i or i can only pass one at a time over and over again yeah yeah i, I see the yeah you're right With, depending on how you've got 15 potions how you, how how you it's get interpreted them all. gets them all yeah. yeah and the same thing was whether it, if either hero is adjacent to a monster, or whether it's just the one passing. Yeah. I can throw the potion to him. Catch it in your mouth. <laughs> ah, choked on it. Okay. All right. Barbarian. Barbarian. Barbarian enters the room and search for um, patients. Okay. Where do you want him standing? Yeah. Here in the corner is perfect. He doesn't care if there's a wandering monster. He's ready to ready to fight. No, he, he searched for a wandering monster. <laughs> he specifically demands. He calls yeah. out the wandering monster. Demand. He uh he grabs a knight from from the audience. Please no one. Grabs his, no his knight's challenge <laughs> from him. <laughs> I'll take that, citizen. <laughs> yep. Okay. Ah, potion of healing. One d six. Or one red die. I always say 1d6. I mean, of course they're d6s, but one red die. Potion of healing. I guess we started saying it that way, and just everybody knows what I mean. Yeah. So he's got two of those now. Yeah. Then we move the, uh, the, the mercenary toward uh, our room. All right. Darn kids these days. One, two, three. Four, five, six. I'm coming. They must need my help. <laughs> okay. All right. Mighty Zargon. All right. All right, alarm. <laughs> you may, okay, 
Um, open any one closed door on the board and reveal its contents. An alarm goes off, alerting nearby monsters. And I'm not going to do the Family Guy one this time. <laughs> family Guy alarm. Okay. <clears throat> so the, the um, secret door opens. Alerting nearby monsters. So we're going to take that as the entire corridor gets revealed. Get to the right spot here. Okay, a stone wall is revealed here. An assassin here. And what appears to be the iron or steel exit door. Okay, that's what you see. Hero's turn. Uh, the wizard searches the table for potions. Okay. All right. He sees a number of uh, ingredients, but he also searches specifically for any already constructed potions in all the drawers and everything, and he finds a potion of magic resistance against damage. Very cool, very cool. All right. You say um, I, I got a question. Those sacred plants I passed them. They're the are they the ones that do the make the potions of restoration? Let's see. Um let's see, hold on. Okay, it says Elven healers have used this plant medicinally for centuries. Used as a reagent to craft one potion of restoration. Yes, that's the one and one or holy water. So he's got two of these. Do we want the holy water or restoration? Oh, honestly, since you have two of them, you can probably make one of each. Okay. Okay. The holy waters come in handy for the uh, for slaying the specters, and the, yeah. those restoration potions have been keeping us alive and keeping the mercenaries alive. Yes, they're great for mercenaries. I agree. Okay. So so you one only water and one restoration. Okay. Did you describe the table with extra ingredients, the extra stuff to find? No, because you, <laughs> you really search for projects. So oh, it will not um, be a special. Let me check here. Put me on the spot. Yeah, I'm sorry. There was a, there was a there was yet another potion. <laughs> yeah, so the barbarian found the uh, because he searches for uh, for uh, for treasures. Yes. Yes, I should have given you... Um, yeah. The Barbarian found the potion, okay? Yeah. yeah <laughs> because it was right. drawn from the, from the deck. So it's the, just uh, switch the two rewards. Take away the potion and... Dexterity. You. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I was a little hasty there. Okay, yeah. It was supposed to be, uh, the special treasure was supposed to be two potions, but you got the special potion, so... Actually, it should be... The Barbarian. The Barbarian, the barbarian searches for for treasure. I searched the uh, the, the desk with your uh, homebrew room. Yeah, that's... So it's a separate search. Okay, so what did I give? And the dwarf also searched that room for treasure and found the 50 gold. Yeah, which would have happened, but I just, I did it in the wrong order. Okay. Right. Anyway. Oh, is that what it is? This room has a certain order for searching? Well, it was supposed to... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I goofed up. So it's supposed to be... Let's see. This, the quest treasure is two potions. 
two random potions. Okay, so someone would get two random potions, then the wizard would get an extra potion, and then somebody would get gold, and somebody would get because it'd be four searches, right? Yeah, the, don't worry, Jason. I mean, uh, you, we don't lose anything. They, they are the same potion you would have found. I'll throw it there in the uh, barbarians. Right. All right, there, so, there, so, there so yeah, that's, that's fine. So I got the gold. The barbarian got the one d six, and the uh, the wizard got a magical something, and somebody gets a dexterity. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah, uh, probably for movement for the wizard. Yeah, yeah, that or the uh, pit trap jump. Yeah, give it to the wizard. Okay, so wizard gets yeah. the wizard uh, okay. greets everybody and says, "See you in the tavern," and runs out. Of the... All right, as he's running out, the assassin's like, "Hey, hold it right there!" <laughs> hey. <laughs> Talking to you. Oh. <laughs> the uh, here goes in front of the uh, the assassin and attacks the. I know. The three, no, it's not enough, right? One, two, How three, much he moves? four, five, six. Five. Oh, he wouldn't quite. Five. Move. I think he moved oh, you're, five. You're he right, because really it's like a swordsman. Really slow. It's like a swordsman. It's very One, slow. So, two, three, four, five. But I can block. Yep, hold the door. I can hold the door and let the rest of the, uh, the people pass. Yeah, you can do that. They run out. Yeah, you got a potion of warmth, so you're trying yeah, to the average there. Right. You go, Jason. You need a reminder. Right. Uh, dwarf, five. Uh, so the dwarf will go uh, right in front of the iron door. Five spaces. All right. He admires the craftsmanship of the door. All right. Um, the arbalist. The arbalist will stand one space in front of the striker and shoot at the assassin. All right. All right. Uh, can I do an uncommon feat since they're in a disguise? What type of uncommon feat? Oh, thank you, um, Barb. Like, uh, walks up and talks to the assassin like they know them. To confuse them and then take a shot at them like Han Solo. Okay. <laughs> Try uh, roll one combat die. Let's see what happens. All right. So you walk up and it's, you're like, so you want to do what you want to do here is. <laughs> okay. Roll your attack. All right. Uh, do I get like a, get a color change on one of them or just straight three dice? I was just thinking just regular. Sorry, I should have said it first, but yeah, just regular attack. Oh, so my so my distraction doesn't really do nothing. Oh, I see what you're saying. Different than a regular attack. Uh okay, fine. Go Can ahead. I do one like no, uh, no, you two talk me white into... and one black? You talk me into it. Do a uh, roll color. And let's see what you get. And I'll let that be your 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 roll. Alright. Uh what's Exclamation. What's the command for that? Exclamation roll color. One word. Okay. That'd be roll. a fun way to do it. Color. A lot of O's and L's. Blue. Okay. All right. Roll your... Let's be three blue. All three of them blue? Yep. Oh, cool. All right. Three of them. Two skulls. Two skulls. All right. Takes two damage. Because he caught him by surprise. Okay. All right, next. Uh, you moved the arbalist too many spaces. 
They would have shot him from in front of the... Oh, yeah. instead of using the broadsword. Okay. All right, and then uh, Monk. Let me roll for his movement. Greedo shot first. Oh, 12. All right. Uh, the monk will make it out of the, the out of the dungeon. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Wizard and the monk are out of the quest. All right. The glaive will run right up to the assassin and attack. Okay. Two skulls. Got him. Awesome. All right. Um... And that leaves the Barbarian. Let's see, uh, the Barbarian. Oh. Oh. Ooh, very, very slow. <laughs> uh, he moved one square to the south, and... Oh, wait, where is the exit? I cannot see it. Oh, my bad. Oh yeah, I, I forgot. So on, uh, I guess on iPhones, there's some icons over here. I was told I completely forgot I was going to move those icons all over here. But yeah, it makes it hard to see things. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so what were you going to do? The tile of the secret door. I cannot oh, see it. Right there. Where is it? Okay, so yeah, so I'll move uh, the Barbarian one square there. All right, he regrets getting, skipping leg day. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, mercenary will move uh, this direction. You whippersnappers. Where's the battle? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, well, he's on his way. And that's it. All right. Okay, that's it. Um, oh, good! I can stop holding my breath. I was waiting for that pit trap. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute. A there was a bonus monster. Well, I think on Android it's probably fine. It's just that on iOS, I think it puts icons over there, and so far nobody using it had. No, on Android the icons, well, the all the the four icons are over there. The hero, the health points, the potion, the disguises. Oh, no, what I'm saying is, does your app specifically put some extra icons, like from Twitch or something? Oh, no. Oh, it wouldn't, because we're in Discord. So it would just be for yeah. viewers. Viewers would be like, wait a minute, how many body points does he have? I can't see it. There's an icon in the way. So it, it, it would make it for a better experience for the Twitch viewer. If I put these icons on the other side, or at least moved them over slightly, like so, there's a, a little bit of a gap. So, anyway, I'll have to fix that on the next. Uh, I almost said on the next rant cast, but <laughs> rant cast. Yeah, well, uh, when I'm on Twitch, the uh, all the chats on the right hand side. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a few visibility tweaks I could do. I'll I'll see what see what I can come up with because I know there's a lot more information on screen now than there was like at the beginning. So yeah, maybe. well I know a lot in the beginning I was opening and closing the chat, sliding it back and forth a lot because that way I could see the whole screen and then it would cut off a, a good quarter to a third of the screen on the right side. Mm-hmm. All right, let me just see here what's going on. Oh, yeah. What, what monster did you get? I'm gonna cat, monster cash in.
pick you and keep it for the next quest. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, that's tempting. Okay, well, I know what monster it's going to be. All right, I agree with that. I will save it for the next quest. All right, because we're so close. You guys are like right there. Come on, log trap. Come on, log trap. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, well, the only reason with the monster and having the space between the dwarf and all the mercenaries was whether or not you were going to try to cut them off and have the barbarian kind of trap for a turn or two. Oh, it is covering that up. Okay, so guys, uh, my idea with the, the threat level was to say that's the number of like cards that I have. So that would include the two types of like these cards. So I add all these up, and then that's the threat level. But you have no idea what these are, right? So this is just what I have in my hand. Yeah, if I had to put the number of monsters, that would get interesting. Like how many monsters are left in the quest or something, but that's that's not what I'm intending to do. So maybe I should explain that better. Threats. I can see the numbers, says Xerxes. Yeah, because when I say threats, well, what does that mean? Maybe threat cards would be better. Or just cards. Because you see it next to it, but then you're like, who is that guy with the beard? Is that is that Mentor? <laughs> Maybe threat cards would be better. In fact, I can update that right now. Just make it a little smaller. There, how's that? Feedback on the fly. Okay, whose turn? Uh, was yours. Okay, yours. I'm done. So the wizard is out. The striker, get out of the quest. Uh, maybe the striker wants to hand that potion of warmth to somebody that might be able to use it. Well, we can just rehire him and uh, <laughs> now give it back. Music. Now you're fired. <laughs> like, oh man! Give it back or you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> this is company property. What what company property? I thought it was. I was really thirsty. <laughs> and be like, okay, I will trade you this gold dagger for your service. Next quest. <laughs> it says, oh, you want it back, huh? Well, let me get it ready for you. And he's like shaking it, shaking it. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> now it's going to fizz over when I try to open it. <laughs> okay, so fine. You want to say he, he's out. he passes it to the dwarf? Okay. Yeah, well, if you want to pass it to the dwarf to, to be sure that it will, don't, will not... Lose it. Uh, I, I don't turning think it's necessary. Turn in your badge when you leave. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you clean out your desk. Okay. <laughs> Can I keep it? All right. All right yeah, well, yeah. Uh, it's kind of his life insurance policy. Like, hey. <laughs> or death insurance. I got not need this. It is job. I mean, uh, a little tip. is a, is a push on a worm. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, Xerxes. Oh, that it might be too spoilery because oh, if people were like, oh, yeah, there's only three monsters left. But, of course, they could be ogres. They could be, you know, gargoyles, you know, whatever. Bloodthirsters. Uh, yeah, bloodthirsters. Yep. With flaming swords. All right. The um, teeth. <laughs> okay. The Arbalist will exit the quest. All right. One, two, three, four. And then I could yeah, roll a die, and he was revealed as the traitor, and he murdered everyone in their sleep. No, it didn't happen. Okay, he's successfully exited the quest. All right, the glaive will exit the quest. One, two, and three. Four. Then the barbarian's turn. All right, he's out. Congratulations. The barbarian, uh, get out of the quest. It's like, now I can loot, loot the dungeon at my leisure. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four. The old man tried to reach the door. One, One two, three, two, four, three, four five, five, six. six. Oh, why? <laughs> All right. Uh, get to draw another card. All right. 
man, if this is Lure of Chaos and it turns him into a Chaos Warrior, <laughs> this would be the greatest ending ever. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> Well, I, it's got. I was gonna say it's gotta be lore of chaos, but I was gonna say it could still be that pit trap. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And, I, and then you would have had to all jump over it. Yeah. Okay. All right. The uh, the the dwarf exits the quest. He tells that guy to, to doors this way. <laughs> I could have told you that, Sonny. <laughs> all right, and then. Bye. I'll Is it here. necessary to uh, get out of the quest? I mean, he lives here. Well, I thought uh, Poor guy. he slowly makes his way back. <laughs> they trashed my store. I could start again. I was insured. Once the, oh, once well, the Civil War is over, I'll be back in business. Let's, let's invite you him. You killed all my neighbors. <laughs> you killed all my neighbors. <laughs> Those guys probably have... They'll probably drink all the grog. Won't well, save any for me. <laughs> it would do a fortune in real estate if he stays here. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, I can rebuild. Well, let's get out of the quest. Okay. All right. So he, he comes along at least to party with you guys. Yay. Let me show you how to really party like we bid, did back in my day. <laughs> all right. Congratulations. Is this another one where we can't shop actually you can shop and i don't care if, if someone wants to tell me that the app says no we're just gonna ignore that the book doesn't say that you can't so i'm gonna treat it as you can okay so congratulations guys that was pandemonium in the streets thank you all right so that um did you want to use that or uh, cash in that uh, potion of unforeseen fate or hang on to it doesn't say you have to uh, craft it so you may I think you use an automatic con you have drink it to use it or not let me let me double check the card because the other thing I'm wondering is if you decided not to use it does that mean it yeah, just stays out a, of the deck there's a re well, there's a reagent that makes it, but I also think there's a potion. Or there's a reagent that makes the potion, and there's the potion. No, there's right. one uh, One makes a random potion. This one, one makes a random potion, and it. the other one is I, a random potion. I think you have to consume it to see the effect. It could be any a random effect. I think. Hmm. Just read it. Good question. Yep. Reading is fundamental. Let's see what it says, actually. Because, yeah, we can do whatever we want, but I am at least wanting to try to follow the designer intention, at least from the outset and before I necessarily change it. <laughs> Boy, you missed his favorite card. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see here. Potion of Unforeseen Fate. The color of the brew is ever-changing. Ah, you were right. It says, drink this potion to draw one random card from the alchemy deck. The effects of the card you draw are immediately activated. Okay, so it doesn't give you the potion, it just immediately cashes it in. So if you drew like a potion of lesser healing, yeah. you immediately would heal yourself up to two. Yes. So it's like, and that's why I was saying if you had the um, champion ability, you could have the elf like either taste it or distill it to either to find out what it is. Yeah, what it really is. What it really is and have that, you know, and then change it into that. But I would think if yeah. you if you have this in your possession and you don't use it, between quests, you would just hang on to the cards. There'd be one less card in the deck, but you would know. Uh, that well, you it, it doesn't, because it you mark it, it, it on your character sheet. Exactly. Wait a minute. Oh, every single card uh, is just a reference. Well, but doesn't it say? Okay, let me double check again because I thought it was saying in the case of the alchemy cards. Yeah, otherwise you'd be correct. 
All right, let me read it again. Let me check the rules. We're not rules lawyering because <laughs> this is the quest is over. Uh, okay. Well, well, it says don't return it to the deck like during until the, the end quest. of the quest, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, but you're saying like I return the card, but you still get the benefit because it's written down. Exactly. So, but does that mean you could cheat the system somehow by like not using the potions, and so at the or or not using the reagents? Oh, but you do that anyway. You keep them. But well, up, yeah, up, you, up to I, now, yeah, just, up to uh, now, I've been update my. Yeah, up to now, I've been keeping those cards separate from the deck, so that's how I've been playing it. I guess maybe that wasn't right. I can, but I get, I get, on, I get during the quest, you wouldn't do that. Um, yeah, I, I oh, just treat them as you record them on your character sheet, like every other card. I never thought about you holding the cards to limit the pool. Yeah, I, like I said, I only do that during the quest myself and then at the end write everything down and anything that doesn't get written down the heroes have lost <laughs> so the card goes back so the deck is always refreshed but yeah you could just like you could have a pile of potions you could have a pile of reagents that are just kind of sitting around waiting to be waiting to be used yeah so technically what what you go back to the deck are uh, only the uh, hazard and uh, wandering monsters because you should uh, reshuffle the deck every uh, every single time you uh, yeah you well, draw. And in the stream, I have not been so, reshuffling the treasure deck unless somebody buys the reshuffle, which they hardly ever do. Why? Because you have a mechanic to to yeah. it. So, yeah. but yes. Okay. Well, all right. At I'll, the end of the quest, I'll make you a. You should replenish the yeah. deck. Okay. I I'll make a ruling on this. I hear what you guys are saying. I think, yeah, mid quest, this will not get replenished. But between quests, yeah, it'll all go back. So you could have 15 <laughs> potions of unforeseen fate just waiting to be used, and they'd still be. Uh, I think there's two of them in here. Because in between, they would they would come. Right. Back. All right. Well, well, even that, it says they right. If, if you're if everybody's got alchemy cards and there's only like two or three left in the alchemy deck and you have like three or four <laughs> unforeseen fates and you'd be like oh you just ran out of alchemy cards or you know what i mean the alchemy deck's empty that's true and so yeah have to use that, the that's what i always thought about you know that's one of those things i just always thought about you know you record them but like i said i i've done it where i've self-limit on the quest itself and then right if it but I've never had a case where anything ran out. It was just, you know, you don't put them back, and the treasure deck always ended up becoming all monsters and traps. Mm -hmm. But yeah. as for the alchemy deck, I never thought about it running out because I <laughs> haven't had a, a situation where it happened. You know what I mean? Because it's still new. Yeah. Okay, so Xerxes yeah, had a also couple very of... Layer. Yeah, Xerxes had a couple of comments. Well, I... I mean, I think a lot of the stuff they did leave open-ended because they wanted us to interpret it. But, I mean, yeah, it's like, okay, this makes sense. But does one, like, make the game better or worse? Or is it just a matter of, you know, taste, personal taste? But yeah, I'd hate to have... Well, once you get a situation where you know there's no reason to draw from the deck, then you just won't do it, right? Unless it's like, oh, I really want a Wandering Monster because in this quest you get bounties for killing Wandering Monsters. So let's bring it on. <laughs> You know, or something like that. Uh, Xerxes says, wait a minute. I reread what I said about the monster icon showing. So what I meant to say, what if you had an icon showing only active monsters on the board that are shown? Well, I hear what you're saying there. But my answer to that would be to say, well, it's just a visual thing. I know it's not like perfect. Like you got to tell me to like look at that corner of the board. Okay, are there any monsters? How many monsters are we seeing? So, I don't know. It's kind of an interest. It's kind of like giving a, a health bar to a boss monster. You're like, okay, how much of the quest is left? Or something like that. But an icon showing the current banked bonus monsters. Well, but see, normally I, yeah, with the bonus monsters, I haven't really been banking them so much as just like, I just decide when to put them out. I mean, maybe it's not instantaneously, but, you know, as soon as I get to, like, a spot, like, oh, it would be cool to have him burst forth from the furniture, or, 
you know, pop out of the shadows and then I have him come out. Yeah, maybe I'll keep that secret to myself or I'll think about it. Hey, Jacer, actually, I was thinking uh, since the next quest, um, we could just, maybe this is a good stopping point. I was going to give you the preview of, of next next week's quest, though. But if you Lordly. Don't... Yeah, if he's uh, well, normally, we, yeah, it's just like, oh man, we could never finish, never finish in time. We're right. we're so far ahead on uh, Mage of the Mirror, I feel like versus Dread Moon, but that's okay. We had to we had to spend some extra time talking about against the Ogre Horde. It kind of took a lot of my energy. <laughs> I'm surprised my voice is held out, to be honest with you. Also, I think we might be able to do a special episode of the Rantcast with uh, another guest this week. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. So, Jacer, do you want me to read it or do you want me to wait for you to come back? Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, you can read it, but, uh, I wanted to do the shopping, but yeah, I didn't even think about the next quest yet. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yes, we, so this is oh. quest five, and we get another, um, you do get to shop. reputation you get to token. Shop. Yes, yes, you do get another reputation token. Thank you for I wanted to play. We, we did only one room. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> but it was an amazing room. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, sorry, Bohemius. Um, okay, so you've got six... Again, six again. Yeah, I, I mean you'll you'll get to shop, but let's see. Well, or we could use that to kind of finish out. Um. Okay, let me just give you a preview. So while you're shopping, you you find out about the next mission. Okay. Quest 6, The Tunnels of a Secret Cadre. The mysterious stranger who has been aiding you on these perilous undertakings reveals himself to be Ithrean, an advisor to Queen Torelia and a member of the Cadre of the Raven's Vale. Ah, at last. Contact, a secret order dedicated to protecting the royal family of Elethorn. Ithrean informs you that the Temple of the Moon holds many of Elethorn's historical relics, including the sacred lunar charms, which I foresee will be of great importance in our coming trials. Zargon's agents have barricaded the temple in anticipation of the impending Dread Moon. You must find another entrance to the temple located amidst these ancient hills. Okay. That'll be next week. Right. Um, the dwarf would like to rehire the arbalist. Excellent. For quest six. Okay. Um, I got a potion of charm. What do you think if I rehire everyone? Ah. Well, I, I rehired the other three. Okay, if you hire, yeah, hire all three with the potion of charm. Yeah, you got the fourth one. We, do uh, we, we didn't unlock the fourth one yet. Did no, we? No, not yet. I don't remember. I don't think we unlocked yeah, that one. Yet. Uh, let me uh, let me double check. No, I think the last I one has remember. not been unlocked yet. Uh, I'll pay for all three uh, mercenaries with the potion of the. Uh, is it working the potion of smart charmer with the? With this yeah, it saves twenty five on each one, so it'll save you seventy five. I don't know if, since they are not actually mercenaries. I don't know if the potion is working. You just ask me. Okay. Well, um, they seem charmed by it. Like, hey, we really can trust you. <laughs> cool. So, how much cost? Us all three. 
Okay, so it would be 50, 50, and 75. So 175. Mm -hmm. Okay. 175. Okay, so you've got 1,200 left, wizard. Okay. Um, charm works like a charm. Charm. Then I'll use uh, the alchemy potion on the last dagger. I think I have one. Right? Yep. Okay. okay. So I'm going 1300. 1300. I'm going to buy three grog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> going up to four for the celebration. Okay. It's uh, 20 each. Yes. Right? So. Well, 20. Then. What else? Charm used. Can I get. um? How much was the uh, I recall? Uh, sorry. Yeah, I don't remember. What, what? The, the, uh, the potion, I cannot buy the recall, I think. Oh. I don't remember if, if he's in the deck. Yeah, let me let me double check that one. Because that might be there were a few that you couldn't buy. Yeah, you I, had to craft. I don't one. remember which ones. I can buy it from the deck. Magic, wait. Yeah, or buy the potion of magic. Uh, the potion of magic has to be crafted, so that can't be bought. Can only be crafted. Yeah. Oh, that can only be Celerity crafted. Clarity can only be crafted. Yeah. Oh no, the um. So so magic you can only you can buy in. No no no. In in one in the one expansion, but. You have to. You can only craft it Found in it. this one. Okay, so potion of recall. Four hundred. Four hundred to recover one spell. Four hundred. I'm going to buy one. Okay. I'm going to uh, eight hundred twenty. Then. Um, I have do you need something specific? How many grogs did you buy? You drank one of them already. Three. Oh, so one, oh one, okay, I had, okay, um, okay, okay. One in my back. No, no, no. So I we have four now in total. Yeah. He's, got a, he's trying to get a six back. <laughs> I could do that, actually. Like, let's do that. <laughs> let's buy two more. So I got a six back. And one, <laughs> seven, 80. Okay. Yep. Then I give, I'm giving the mace. But he should have an extra mace. I give it to the barbarian. Can you please update the barbarian? Um, a mace should have a yeah, a weapon. A mace. Hmm, I didn't write that down, so never mind. Probably it's already been. Give it to him. Never mind. Okay, so I've got dagger, staff, two torches, cloak, bracers, rallying horn. Check it. Check if the barbarian got a mace in his. Uh... Right, let me check. Yes, he does. Okay, so you gave it to Perfect. him already. Perfect. I already gave it. Then, uh, do you need a dexterity potion, uh, sir? I. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I could use, the dwarf could use one. Okay, I give one of my dexterity potion to the dwarf. Okay. Alright, and the dwarf wants to give the elven cloak of passage to the elf while we're in between quests. Ah, he greets you warmly at the tavern and appreciates the... <laughs> um, and 
the I'm going to give the potion of warmth back to the alchemist so that he could uh, divvy it out to a mercenary or something if he needs to. Okay. And uh, the monk is going to buy um, a potion of restoration or no. Uh, What's the one that with the, is it 500 or something for the D6? Oh, um, yeah, potion of rejuvenation. Rejuvenation, yes. Yeah, the monk's going to buy one of those. Okay, so 500. Yeah, in uh, Dread Moon, they just renamed it to potion of healing, but it's the same same thing. And, I'm sorry, goes to the monk? Yes. Okay, so he's got two uh, D6s now. So I'll bring him down to 350. Just 350 for the monk's total? Yes. Okay. Okay, wizard 780. What's the and dwarf? Dwarf is going to. Oh, I have three plus fours. I have a superior restoration. Uh, I gave the warmth back to the alchemist. So he's got four potions. The monk has two D6s, superior restoration, and unforeseen fate. So he's kind of got four. Um... How much for uh, a potion of restoration? Uh, the small one? Yes. Okay, yeah, because the big one's 800. The small one is 300. 300. One body point, one mind point restored. I'm going to buy I'm going to buy one of those. 300. That'll bring me down to 827. 827 for the dwarf and rest, small restoration. Okay. I'm going to buy two smoke bombs. Excellent. I never find uh, a way to use the card books yet. I got one. Uh, Jay, sir? Yeah, um, I was thinking about buying that. I'm trying to. Figure, that's why I was buying a smaller potion with the dwarf. Yes. Um, uh, uh, the dwarf's going to uh, use two hundred, and he's going to buy one caltrop and one smoke bomb. Okay. So 627, you have a yep. Caltrop. Yeah, I suppose since the bad guys automatically would know, it's just a way to like stop a monster from crossing this line, basically. Or he, I would have to waste a monster's movement to stop him right there, and then the next guy passes by. But there's still a chance yeah. that he could... Yeah, it would slow down the advance of a monster. <laughs> yeah, if you have to run away from a, a monster, I can understand that. Oh, Mordecai. You didn't find the moment. I'm so sorry. So Mordecai just cashed in three bonus potions for the heroes. Okay, so that'll... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, yeah, and he highlighted his message and everything. I was so busy looking at the character sheets. I'm sorry. Next game will be called The Ultimate Hero Quest of Invincible Heroes. They take no damage. Okay. So three potions. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Vorticon. 
Okay, so I have filled healing. Potion of warmth. And a potion of wizardry. This grants the wizard the power to cast any one spell twice. Must be consumed before the wizard chooses the spell to cast. Which then may be cast twice during the same turn. There you go, two genies. Magical aptitude, right? No, got it. You oh, pick one spell and it gets cast twice. Wow. Yeah, two so genies. So different. Aptitude would so, yeah, be like genie and fire breath. Or two healing waters or two tempests, depending on whatever you, you got left. Ah, thank you, awesome. Sand Swift. I'll contribute to Wardicon's redemption. <laughs> nice. Uh, take, uh, and take All right, so the alchemists take that one. And um, give the warmth the Three. give the warmth to one of the mercenaries. Give the um, what was it? The half filled bottle to the striker, and the dwarf will give that potion of restoration to the other to the arbalist. So that way, all the uh, mercenaries start with a potion. All this down here. So we've got the three mercenaries. And tell me again who got what? The arbalist is getting the dwarf's potion of restoration. That we just drew. Okay. Yeah. No uh no, the that's the one that the dwarf bought. Oh that you previously had, okay. The striker gets the half filled bottle. That you just drew. Okay. And the glaive gets the warmth that you just drew. Okay, got it. And we'll say Potion of Wizardry goes to the wizard. Yes. Surprise. Okay, so we've got another potion of restoration, superior restoration, and heroic brew. All right. Um, the monk and the dwarf both have a superior restoration. Does the barbarian have a superior restoration? No. Give that one to the barbarian then. So weak. And what was the other potion? Uh, heroic brew. Heroic brew. Uh, Maybe give it to the monk. All right. So he's now got two heroic brews. Excellent. Hey, I mean, it is what it is if uh, people want to buy it. No, I, I stuff. used that other one. Oh, you used it. Okay, yeah. so just got one then. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay. Makes it easier to remember. He still has the unforeseen fate. Yes. No, Barbarian doesn't need that. <laughs> okay. Uh, last thing for me, I want to give two of my potion to Jacer. One fire resistant. Okay. And one uh, frost skin. Fire resistance, frost skin. You you decide which character is better, Jason. I give it to you. All right. I'm gonna 
give the thing. The dwarf has magic resist damage. This is and the monk. I'll, oh, he used his. Uh, I'll give the fire resistance to the monk. Ah. Resist his own fire. Okay. Well, I mean, it's it, it, it's the Magus Guard piece of the puzzle. Yes. And the effects is the Tempest piece of the puzzle. And the magic resist damage is the dread spell piece of the puzzle so they can't always have all of them but okay so the monk is that and then where did the other one go the dwarf will get the frost skin frost skin okay don't worry audience members they will not be invincible trust me <laughs> all right uh, so I think that's it. Okay. So body and mind points are going to be restored. I'm not going to hit all the buttons right now. I'm just, <laughs> I'm kind of tired. Um, spells are restored. Were previously used. Okay. And you know what the next quest is going to be. Hey, shop close. <laughs> I'm running out of inventory. <laughs> all sales are final. Yep. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thanks for playing. Thanks for chatting. Do we have any any uh, more thank news? You. Did the uh, um, the, the guy who bought the? I have a request that you raid Knucklehead. Oh, is he on? Uh, he was. I oh. thought I saw him. Okay. Yeah, I think the captured goblins have gone home for the night. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it'd be really funny if somebody was just like, bonus monster, bonus monster, bonus monster. <laughs> like, oh man. Yep. Short and sweet tonight. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, it was it was definitely short and sweet for me too. I had a long full day. Um, it was a lot of fun. So let's let's check out our stream. And yeah, definitely check out um, this video. I'm just going to link right here. I haven't watched it yet, but... Should be getting ready to premiere on YouTube. It's from uh, Cristobal's channel about St the Stephen Baker interview. So keep that in mind. Yep, he's on. Looks like he's playing Monster Hunter. Cool. All right, we'll uh, we'll give him a raid. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. New quest next time. That's right. For Rise of the Dread Moon, anyway. <laughs>